Hey guys, what's up? It's Evan Ross Katz. I'm senior style editor at Mike.com. I may be Jewish, but today I am saying hallelujah because hallelujah. I am joined by a <laughs> professional, honey, Miss Shangela Laquifa Wadley. What? Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Evan. Hi. Thank you. It is so good to see you once again, reunited Thank at you. last. You know, you've had quite a week right now. Honey. TRL, BuzzFeed, Build Series, Watch What Happens Live, all just this week. How does it feel to be fully in gear? You know what, I live my life at high speed a lot of times. You know, I've been traveling the world and touring and, and uh, performing and just trying to make the most out of every opportunity. That's what I did when I came out of Drag Race. I tried to make the most of every opportunity. And this week though, feels like my best week ever. It's just been so great to be able to feel co so confident in who I am as a person, as a drag professional, okay? Mm. And to be able to share that with everyone and also represent for my fans who've been down for me since season two, hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, one of the interesting things that emerged at the Build Series conversation yesterday was something that Kennedy spoke about, which was this sisterhood. And you could mm -hmm. definitely feel the vibe of the conversation was very much that. Yes. One of the great things that I've seen from all the promo that you all have been doing is this sense of community amongst each other. Um, what is it like sort of being around each other, not just in the workroom and not just on the show, but now in this press cycle and everything, having all that time with your sisters? How important is that? You know, it is very important. As when I even first started as a baby drag queen, um, the people that I learned from were the most important people to me, not only on the show, but outside the show. And the girls that I've worked with, the queens around the world who I've worked with in different dressing rooms and on different shows, that teach you a little something. And sometimes you can just watch and learn and grow. And to be now back with my RuPaul's Drag Race sisters, you know, I've been around since season two. I've seen about 80 of these girls come <laughs> up and through the door, honey. And I can say that I have a special bond with pretty much all of them. And it's because, you know, we have a shared experience. When you go through something with someone, and the show is definitely going through something, okay? And when you go through, whether it's a competition or a a special moment in your life, you build a bond. And that's what we have all together, for sure. Let's talk about those early days for a second. So you first appeared on the show in 2010 during season two. Mm -hmm. It was a very different drag race then. Um, it had not yet become the cultural phenomenon that it is today. Right. What was sort of your vantage point of what the show was during around the time you were auditioning? Well, um, I'll say for my season two audition, I remember um, being like a little apprehensive because I was like, okay, I want to do this. I want to, you know, try this out. But I wasn't super sure. I knew I didn't have like amazing skills with regard to like makeup and hair and just the kind of like building blocks of drag. But I knew that I wanted, I, I love being on stage and I love performing and I loved, I love drag. So I put in the audition tape, honey. I didn't even get in drag for the tape. That's how I was like, <laughs> y'all, we'll, we'll edit in some videos of me in drag, but I told them that these are the top 10 reasons you don't want me on your show. Because I don't even know if I should be on your show. And I think they found it funny. I guess they did. And they enjoyed it. And they said, we want to see more of this queen. So I'd be like, I hate being out there by myself. And then all of a sudden it would cut to a video of me on stage. We're like, pow, 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 pow. So it was fun. And you were relatively new to drag yes. when you first came on the show. So can you sort of talk about your early days of, as you said, baby drag mm -hmm. and sort of what that was like for you? Well, um, it was a lot of learning and growing, but let me tell you, it was also so much fun. It is fun still now, but you know, here as you know, being part of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 3 that they call the gold standard of drag, you mm -hmm. want to just put your best self out there at all times. When you're a baby drag, you're like, okay, I'm ready, bring it, whatever it is. And I was just so fearless at that time. And I still think I carry that with me today, but it was just like, I was, honey, I was out there just full on Shangela. You couldn't stop me on stage. I was doing back handsprings and falling and flipping and, and just, but I was having so much fun as I do now, but it was just a raw type of fun. A little song I wrote for y'all. I'm getting ready for All Stars 3. I hope the judges, they vote for me. And if they don't, then you will see. I'm gonna act a fool. I would say Shangela, if I were to just throw some words out there, loud, fun loves a good party, loves to have a good time, loves to see other people have a good time. Very motivated in life. I want to win. I just want to win for myself. I want to win, I want to succeed, and I want to create. I love creating projects and being involved in like television and film and writing music and j doing drag. I just want to create and make a, make a moment in this world. And um, I hope that people will identify with that and support it. Hallelujah. You know, I got merchandise. So. Yes. Oh, <laughs> but that's who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I, at my core, I think I'm a good person. 
And even though sometimes I kind of like fall down or may not do or say the right thing always, um, at the core of who I am is a good person. And I want other people to be good people too. So talk to me about what happened between seasons two and seasons three. When you went back and watched season two, what was it like watching yourself on reality television? I Ooh. imagine that's a really uh, unique experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, and um, back then in season two. It feels so long ago. Yeah, it does, right? <laughs> Shut up. No, it don't. It was yesterday. <laughs> what are you talking yesterday. about? Ah. But you know what? Between season two and three and then watching back, I really um, would look at myself and be like, okay, because of course I was only there for that one day. Uh, I was the first one in the door day. and one first one out. <laughs> but you, you look at yourself and you go, okay, this is how I come across. Even a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to step outside of yourself and see how others may perceive you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got to see in watching the show. Like, oh, okay, oh, okay. But I also learned, okay, sister, so you may want to pick up that makeup brush and learn a little bit more. And that's what I did. I left the show. I went and competed in a pageant. I won uh, Miss California Entertainer of the Year and uh, went on to complete, compete in the national pageant, got first runner up. And I just worked on myself. After seeing myself on television, I said, okay, I want to work on myself. I want to grow. I want to evolve. I want to get better. And and that's how I got back on season three of Drag Race. And that is very much what you did when you came back for season three. There was just a much more polished and established queen before the audience's yes. eyes. So what was it like coming back on season three? And did you feel an added pressure to sort of build off of who the audience thought you were and mm -hmm. to sort of sort of show them all that you had learned during the off season? Well, you know, uh, coming back on season three of RuPaul's Drag Race, I'd still only been doing drag for one year at that time. And as you as time goes on, you hope to learn and grow and evolve and be better. But at that time I came back and I just had such a fire and a passion. And the fact that RuPaul had brought me back at that time I was the first queen to ever be brought back on another season. And so I was like, I owe it to Ru. I had to prove to Mama Ru that she made the right choice. And I was trying to figure out what the judges wanted. But I also just, uh, you can see in the show, I have just such a journey throughout season three of still growing and learning and watching and as well as competing. I was fiery, honey. Yeah, I had to let them know I didn't have a sugar daddy at two either. You know, that, that was because I just, you know, I was so, um, I just wanted it so bad. And I felt like every time I was being judged, I was doing something wrong. And even in that one year, I still didn't fully realize who Shangela was. I was figuring it out as I went along. And now that brings me to today, which, honey, I know I'm like Beyonce says, I'm a grown woman, okay? Yes. <laughs> what is it like in front of that panel of judges? I think it's easy as a Ooh, viewer to shook. sort of... Yeah, Shook. it's easy as a viewer to sit back at home and judge for yourself, but I imagine it's a completely unique experience in that moment, especially when you work really hard on the look, you work yes. really hard on the challenge. Um, did it get easier over time to sort of deal with the judge's critiques? No, <laughs> not at all. Every time they read you, you're like, I'm getting red in front of America <laughs> and the world. But you know, um, in season three, I was always trying to figure out what the judges wanted from me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, Shangie, judges like, I would see them like say something to another girl like, oh, there wasn't enough of a production in your look. So I was like, okay, next episode, if I make it, I'm gonna be full on production. I brought out a frost chill of the snow hole. I had a cane. I had a, you know, a lampshade dress. I said, they're getting production. <laughs> but what I learned is as the show went on, it's not about trying to figure out what the judges want. Cause from different people, they want different things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not even asking for one, specific set of criteria, they're just trying to make sure that you're giving the best that you can, that they know you can, mm -hmm. based on the audition tapes and also what they know about you and what they see on the show. So it's important, at least it was to me, to get out of my head, quit trying to figure out what they want, and just try to present the best me possible, which I think at the end of season three, I was kind of getting to, and now I feel like I fully have realized that. But you still don't want to get red, especially right. not by Michelle Visage. Right. Oh, Lord, please. Right. You know, her brows are painted just looking at you like this. <laughs> and you're like, oh, here it comes. I'm sorry, Mama. You start apologizing before. RuPaul right. will be like, up next, Michelle Visage. I'm sorry. That's what I just start with. I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. I don't know what, what's going on. I know you're looking at me with the brow, but I love her, though. Outside of the workroom and outside of the RuPaul's Drag Race experience, I've toured with Michelle. She's actually the nicest, yeah. sweetest, most nurturing, motherly 
figure. Ooh, but you don't want to get me, mama. Mm -mm. <laughs> you mentioned this idea of wanting to get out of your head, which is really easy in theory, but I yes. imagine it's more difficult in practice. What were some of the things that you did to sort of get out of being stuck in your head and to really make sure that you were just presenting the best Shangela that you could? Prepare. It's just like if at any show, like if I go and perform, I perform at universities and colleges and events around the world. If I prepare and I feel comfortable before I hit the stage, I still get nerves before I go on. If I had a Red Bull, honey, it's a wrap. But in my heart, I'm like, oh Lord, I'm having a heart attack. But um, I think that's good because it shows I'm present in the moment, but um, I prepare. You know, you get your numbers together. You see the stage before you go out there so you know what, how far you can go. And that's just like Drag Race. If you can best prepare, you can't prepare for everything because, mm -hmm. you know, you got challenges. It's mm -hmm. coming. But if you try to put your best foot forward and, and mentally and with regard to, like, your wardrobe and stuff, prepare yourself, you won't get as nervous. The way to get out of your head is to feel more confident in what you're doing. And that's what I had to get. I had to say, okay, what things do I need to do to prepare better so I feel more confident and I don't get mm -hmm. nervous and think, oh, Lord, this outfit's going to fall apart when I go out here, girls, held together by glue and two threads. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to 2011, coming okay. off of the third season. Immediately thereafter, you really blew up. Um, you had Working Girl come out, this music video with Abby Lee Miller in the yes, video. Yes, you iconic. know, Abby Lee. And then the television gig started. Um, Bones, Glee, Two Broke Girls, The X-Files, Dance Moms, etc. Yeah. You really established this career for yourself. What was it like in the beginning coming off of the show, sort of navigating your professional life? Well, because you um, are a professional. I am, as the song says, I am a working girl professional. Yes. yes. Um, you know what? Coming off of season three, because I didn't win season two, I didn't win season three, but I never gave up on myself. Mm. You know, I, I'm from a small town. I'm from Paris, Texas. Um, I moved out to LA with these big dreams of like making it in Hollywood. And that's not an easy road. Um, I do have a great friend and mentor in the actress Jennifer Lewis, who has a new book called The Mother of Black Hollywood, currently available on Amazon. And, um, but you know, I get a master class in from someone who has been in this business for 30 years. She told me, oh baby, trust me, you're never getting a handout from me. I'm not doing nothing extra. Nobody did it for me, I'm not doing it for you. You but sound what just what like you, I, I, I love Jennifer Lewis. You stay around someone for so long, you will. Start to sound like them. But I say, um, because I hear it in her voice when she's telling me, you, she always said this, the elevator to success is broken, take the stairs. And I listened to that and I, I held that in and I, that's the kind of mantra that I use in my life. You have to go to work. I wrote the song Working Girl because I came to work. I am a professional. I've been working since I was at, from the age of 14. And I went to college on a leadership scholarship because I was out there involved in so many different organizations and programs. And when you're in Hollywood, they don't just, because I was on Drag Race, hand me roles. Mm. I, I auditioned for all those roles. I prepared for them. I did the work. And when you do the work and you're ready for the moment, when the moment comes, you can succeed. And I think that's what I've been able to do. And I'm so thankful, you know, to have these roles. I always wanted to work as an actor and to be able to work in it as an actor with so many people that I've always looked up to and, and writers and creators like Michael Patrick King, who hallelujah, call me Michael mm. Patrick King. <laughs> um, but you know, it's awesome to be ready. And that's what I feel like all of this has been. Drag Race season two, Drag Race season three, working after Drag Race, and now back on All Stars. It's just continuously getting ready for whatever, for every big moment. Yeah. Life isn't just a build up to one big moment. You get knocked down, you gotta get back up. And you have all these moments. And I've been thankful to have so many moments, and I hope to have many more. It sounds like in the secret sauce that makes Shangela. Oh, secret sauce, yes. I like that. Preparedness <laughs> seems like a really big part of that. Yes. But also there's this kindness and humility. I mean, I've known you for a while yes. and anyone that I talk to about you within the industry, I think will echo the exact same sentiment about how kind and uh, human and, and nice you are. I imagine, it sounds like an easy thing, but in this industry and with a lot of, not naming any names, not <laughs> everyone is perhaps as kind um, and present. How do you, I know it sounds like a strange question, how do you maintain your kindness, but sort of how do you, make? yeah. How do you make, how are you so kind? Oprah Sunday, Soul <laughs> Sunday, I watch Soul Sunday. Yes. But you know what though, um, one, I come from a loving family. Uh, my mom is, oh Lord, don't let me start crying in this interview. I love mm. my mommy so much. You know, I was in New York, I remember, and I broke my leg here on stage performing, doing a death drop that I taught on Dance Moms. I did it the wrong way that time. And I snapped the tibia and fibula both outside this 
uh, leg and I was in the hospital for three weeks in Lenox Hill here in New York where they put a titanium rod in here and screws and all that. I'm back, don't worry. And um, my mom literally stayed in the hospital with me in a bed next to I was like, mom, we can get you a hotel right across. She did not leave. And that's just a, a testament to how kind and loving, you know, my grandma who I love so much and my family and, and people that I look up to in the industry who I ad admire and want to be like, they're nice people. And I'm thankful to be around nice people and learn how when life hits you and people even, you know, we get negative comments a lot of times on, on the internet and stuff. Don't focus on that. I live my, I say hallelujah because I live my life in a hallelujah type lifestyle. That's a positive word that I use to keep me going. And you know, you get some extra money on your check, you be like hallelujah. So that's <laughs> how I, I feel and I live. And I just, you know, try to focus on the positive because it makes me a happier person and I can put out fun projects, I can meet great people, and I attract, you know, like you, I attract nice people to me, and um, and the haters, I just be like, boom, bam, <laughs> I don't bother with these hoes, don't let these hoes bother me. <laughs> so speaking of attracting important people, in 2015, you joined Miley Cyrus on stage True. at the Video Music Awards. Yes. Major, major moment. Many other queens, but my eye went right to you. What? Um, what was that experience like? It was unforgettable. It was everything. It was like, okay, uh, you know, Miley had come to the RuPaul's Drag Race finale uh, taping and saw me and my drag mother, Alyssa Edwards, and my sister, Laganja, perform on that stage. And she said, I want those girls. And when she, and she remembered, and then when she got ready for the 2015 award, she was like, I want to do something major, and I want to do it at Drag Queens. And she called us, she said, I want y'all three right up in front. And she had all of the, a lot of the RuPaul's Drag Race girls was there as well. And I remember the rehearsal on the stage at MTV. We went there and you know, they have the pictures of everyone who's gonna be there, all the celebs, the real celebs, on the seats. And I remember doing selfies with like Kanye and Kim's <laughs> like seat picture. Cause I was like, are we really gonna be on this stage tomorrow next to Miley Cyrus, who by the way, was the coolest, most down to earth. I remember the first day she came to rehearsal, she was like, what up everybody? And like went around and hugged people and was like, hey boo, and like really cared. And then she got me and uh, Alyssa and Lagarde to perform at her private after party for it. Yes, yes, mm. you can go to Living with Shangela on YouTube. I had a, the only one with a camera inside. Mm. I got it. Uh, <laughs> and um, I remember it was, you know, she was so sweet. And I remember sending her flowers the next day just to say thank you. And she like, Instagrammed it and like sent me a really nice note back. She's just a nice person. Like I said, I meet nice people. Hallelujah, unforgettable, hallelujah Miley. What's good? <laughs> so let's talk All Stars. Okay. So we had the first two iterations of All Stars happen. Yes. When you saw those on television, did something <laughs> stir in you and say, I want another go at this? Always. Honey, I keep my phone, I don't even put it on silent just in case RuPaul calls, okay? <laughs> I always loved the Drag Race family the legacy, the brand, it gave me my start. It put me right here in this seat with you. So anytime they call, I'm ready to go back. And you know, I'm a fan of the show as well as a participant. I'm a fan of the show. I watch every season, I watch every episode, probably twice, you know? That's why I can't ever be on time to the airport. I'm always packing and watching Drag Race. And um, I always think like, ooh, what would I do in that situation? Mm -hmm. So now to be able to have the opportunity to be back for All Stars 3, I get to see what I'm gonna do in that situation. So stay tuned. Oh, we will be, <laughs> without a doubt. So, of the girls in season three, we're so excited to see everything that goes down. Yes. I know you can only tease so much, mm. but can you say, when all the girls walked in the workroom, uh -huh. who were you most excited to see in there? Ooh, okay. Um, you know, I'm the last one in. Mm -hmm. You saw it with the oh, box, yeah, they released that, so I can say that. And I have my little Tiffany's box, and bam! <laughs> so, when I looked around and saw all the girls, I was like, okay, okay, hey, sister, all right. I was excited to see all of them. Cause you know, I've been around since season two, I've worked with all these girls. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, all right. And I know, you know, when you know the girls, you think, okay, I know everything about these girls. I know what they're bringing. But these are all stunt queens, honey, mm -hmm. including myself. Mm -hmm. So there will be stunt shows, drama, glitter, glamor, and all that extra. And I was just like, all right, I'm in here. There are the girls, let's do this. It seemed like between season nine and All Stars 2, something sort of shifted and the show really took on this, it just became an all-out <laughs> phenomenon. Not to say it wasn't before then, but something really shifted in the atmosphere and it really became this show that, as the New York Times just reported, a lot of women started watching yeah. and the audience just grew and grew. International fans, etc. 
Coming back now, do you feel that sense of heightened pressure at all in this situation, knowing how much larger the fan base has gotten? You know, I try not to think about that. <laughs> Honestly, um, whether it's one person watching or a million people watching or 10 million people watching, mm -hmm. um, I, my goal on the show is always, the only audience I care about is RuPaul and that panel of judges. That's who's gonna determine if I'm here another day. That's who's gonna determine if I get my photo hung in that Hall of Fame. That's who's signing these checks, okay? So it's important to impress them. I don't think about other people watching, although I know we have amazing fans all around the world. I've been able to perform on six out of the seven continents. Mm -hmm. I'm excited I'm gonna be having this viewing party at Mickey's in West Hollywood every week, which fans can come and experience the show with me. But when doing the show, you don't think about that. You just think about, baby, it's like Survivor. How do I make it to tomorrow mm -hmm. without being voted off this island or whatever the case, or told to walk the plank, or however you, we die on mm -hmm. Drag Race. People love to see us <laughs> sashay away. That is scary, that is nerve wracking. You mentioned six of seven continents. Yes, are except we gonna, Antarctica. Are we, are we gonna see you on Antarctica? Yes, I mean, child, I'm like... working on it. I wanna be in the Guinness Book of World Records as the first drag performer to perform on all seven continents. There's actually this National Geographic uh, cruise that goes down from Argentina, which uh, I'm going to be performing in Chile and Peru with the Work the World Tour um, next month. But I want to take this cruise down there, and you can. My aunt has been. You can get off the boat for about. There's like a rule that you only so many people can be on Antarctica at one time. Uh. Yeah, I've really thought about this. <laughs> I got a happy feet number. I'm gonna go down there with the penguins and be like, "Come on, bitch, yes. clap for me." But um, yeah, so I'm hoping to do it. I mean, it's not right now scheduled. But and if I can get a book in Antarctica, promoters, Antarctica promoters, call me. <laughs> yes, I'm totally here for that. Yes. Now, they just announced the celebrity guest judges yesterday. Woo! And one in particular uh, really caught my attention. Who's and that, that is uh, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. And I thank you, baby. Nancy Pelosi being a RuPaul's Drag Race judge. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about Nancy Pelosi coming up in the gig with yeah. us? I, amazing. You know, I'm um, I'm a fan of everything that she's done to push us forward. You know, she originally was in San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, I, I remember, and um, she just has done so much in the in the political world to move us forward as a community. She's been right there with us for a very long time. And to see her now on RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm like, yes, moving yeah. on up in Judge World, aren't we? Just to see on her Twitter saying, you better work. I just was <laughs> like, wow, we really are having a moment. So I want to name, there are so many queens that have been on the show. Uh -huh. As you mentioned, you have a relationship with many of them. I do. I don't, I'm not asking you to read them, but I'm just going to name some names, and I just want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, friends. no, I ain't even had no coffee. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's going to be Shady Boots. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay, and this is running the gamut because there are so many queens that I've okay, seen Okay, okay. So, Miss Stacey Lane Matthews. Uh, Hanny. <laughs> Hanny. Detox. Uh, let's go. It's birthday. And I say that because we were on the Work the World Tour together, and every city we go to after the show ends at like 11 o'clock. I'm like, let's go out, Detox. She's like, oh, Miss Chantel, not that tonight. And I'm like, come on, girl, it's somebody's birthday. And she'd be like, who's? I don't know somebody's. <laughs> She's fun. Tatiana. Uh, beauty. Just beauty. Naomi Smalls. Legs. Mm. Nina Bonina. Uh, uh, characters. Mouse is what I was going to say. <laughs> she came out as a mouse. And she came out as a mouse on the show, yes. Uh, Alexis Mateo. Sister. Yes. Uh, Bianca. Uh, Reed. Mm. And, and, and uh, I want to say also, like, comedian because I love her reads are super funny and she has this amazing tour and I was just over at her house the other night and we watched a Patti LaBelle <laughs> videos uh, all night this uh, show that was on YouTube that aired called like family of sisters or sisters singing together it's something with Patti it was a concert with Patti and uh, Gladys Knight and Dionne Warwick mm. and it's hilarious we sat there and watched it all night and I love her so read because she does read the best out of anybody I know uh, speaking of people with good reads, Latrice. Oh, mother! Latrice, <laughs> mother! I love Latrice! She'd be like, baby, I'm doing another show tonight, baby. All right, Miss Latrice. I love Latrice. What about Kim Chi? Kim Chi, makeup. Miss Thing can just look in the makeup, but we could be looking at the same makeup kit, and she will come out with one of the most creative things. I would like never, you know, use a certain product in a certain place, mm -hmm. but she can do it and make it look so creative and fun and fabulous. She's one of the people when I walked in the workroom, I was surprised I didn't see. 
because I just think that she continues to evolve and grow. And who knows? All Stars 4. All Stars 4. But let's get through three first, okay? <laughs> Let me get this check first, okay? Uh, what about Valentina? Um, Valentina, um, I think a mask because that was just like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, an unforgettable moment. Indeed. But I've worked with her and traveled with her and she's uh, like really fun to like, we call each other the dolls. She's mm. the, one of the dolls. What about Miss Alaska? Are All Stars 2 in Hi! Her? And that word just goes on forever and ever because I love Alaska, but everywhere you go, now, hi mm. is just a part of gay lingo. It's up there with, you know, hallelujah and not today Satan yes. and you better work. Hi. What about Miss Gia Gunn? Fish. <laughs> Fresh tilapia just landed last night, honey. Miss Fish. I love Gia. Uh, Tammy Brown. Cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo. In a good way. But, but in a good way. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, your drag mother. Alyssa Edwards. There's one no of words. The, yeah. No words. This is the only thing you need to know about Alyssa. That's all. That's, that's all. it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so I want to talk a little about Say What Entertainment. Yes. And how it came to be. You recently participated in this New York Times article in which you spoke about this. And one of the things that you mentioned is this sort of whisper network that began among the girls, trying to make sure that these girls were getting paid properly for the yes. gigs. That's phenomenal, not only because you're doing it for yourself, but you're making sure that your other fellow queens are taken care of. Where did the idea for that company start? Well, um, Sable Entertainment is the drag management company that I started in 2012. And it actually came about because two things. One, um, when after Drag Race, no one really, especially back in season two, three, no one really told us about touring or about having a manager or an agent. It just, it kind of like snowballed. It was like one club would call you and be like, hey, do you want to come over to San Francisco and do a show? And you're like, oh my God, yeah. Oh, they're going to pay me. They're going to pay for my flight? Mm. Thank you. You don't have to pay me. You know, because we were working, drag queens a lot of times we work for 50, 100 bucks a night um, on shows and for tips. So it's important to tip your local queens, just so you know. But no one really knew um, what, you, what the business of drag mm -hmm. was. And we got taken advantage of a lot. I got taken advantage of by this guy that was like, I'll be your manager. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. And he was doing bookings for me, taking the deposit and not telling me he had booked. So I would see like a flyer on the internet saying like, Shangela's gonna be here next Friday. I'm like, I'm gonna be where? I'm not going to mm -hmm. Oakland. Who told me I'm going to Oakland? And I would call the club directly and be like, I'm, you guys are false advertising. They're like, no, we paid your agent. So, you know, and that story became like, it came popping up amongst a lot of the girls. We would get taken advantage of. And then at the same time, I had broken my leg, so I was in recovery and rehab for like three months, you know, or four, you know, getting back on my feet. So at that time, I was down, but I have a degree in corporate communications and PR, and I was like, you know what? Let's see if I can build something. And I would just tell the girls, we'll, let me handle it. And I had a great friend, a business partner, Ron Davis, who I've worked with since Shangela started. And he and I just started building this like network of promoters and venues. And then it started going international as the show. You know, I was I ain't been on the show since what 2012, but I have had a nonstop career of touring since then. It's because we've created some great relationships with people not only in the U.S. but around the world. And we started to share those relationships with the girls that we manage. Alyssa Edwards, at the time, Laganja Estranja, Raven. You know, we've had a lot of great um, girls and queens to come through Say What Entertainment. So I was just happy to build a place where the girls could feel safe, that they know that no one was trying to steal money from them, and the, to share the fact, the network that we had built. Because if they couldn't get me on a Friday, they'd go, well, who do you got? Right. Oh, well, hold on just a second, baby. Let me get up in this phone. And that's how we built the company. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really cool. Let's and we're hiring, so season 10, come mm. on over. <laughs> Let's talk about social media for a moment. Um, because back when you were first on the show, which was just yesterday, yeah, as we said. Thank you, fresh um, fish. Yes, social media was not as big of a part of the show as it mm. is today. Thankfully, you've built this enormous following since. How do you manage social media? And I know this is a subject that comes up a lot, but trolls on social media. I know you mentioned earlier sort of um, keeping your eye on the positivity. Yeah. Um, easier said than done. It is. Um, what is your relationship with social media with regards to your drag? Uh, well, you're right. Social media had just, like Twitter had just started right after season uh, two of Drag Race, because I remember Pandora was one of the first people on hmm. Twitter, and I remember my friend uh, was like, my drag daughter, uh, Miss Liam, she was tapping on my phone, and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm downloading Twitter for you. I'm like, please don't put nothing else on my phone. I have enough apps, I have Facebook, and that is enough to have to update. I got a page, and a boy page, and a fan page. Please don't put nothing else on my phone. But 
Social media gave us such an opportunity to connect so quickly and get like real time responses from our fans. Mm -hmm. And I started posting all my videos on YouTube and we just, everyone felt so connected, which was awesome. But yes, you do get trolls on the internet who are haters, <laughs> who will let you know the smallest thing you may think you have, you know, are killing it and they'll just like try to take you down. But you can't focus on that. I remember I used to be a clapback girl. I got a, I was like, okay, oh, you want to say this? Let me, and not really mean spirited, but just like trying to explain myself. Like, baby, no, you don't understand what's going on. This hair was meant. Like, and I remember one of my fans commented to me. She said, Shangela, I've left like three loving messages on your page, but this person who like read you, you responded to them. You didn't respond to me. And that really like settled in with me. Cause I was like, you know what? You're right. And that told me, girl, you need to be focusing on these people who love you, who share love with you and give love to you, and give them some love back. And that's what I try to do. Now, I can't respond to everybody as much as I would <laughs> like to, especially now, which I'm excited because I get to get a whole new like generation of followers of through the RuPaul's Drag Race. The fans keep getting younger and younger. It's yeah, incredible. oh no, they stand outside. When we perform at clubs, you're like, baby, who are those people outside when you pull up? Those are the fans, Shanji. Oh my God, hi, <laughs> how are you? Oh my God, can I pick you up? And we do like, you know, prides, and there's so many different families, and it's so awesome to see like just a mom and a dad and their kid, or a mom and a mom and a dad and a dad, and their kids coming to these events. And like, we I've done story reading time in Seattle for a kids a daytime pride event where I just sat around and read stories to the kids in drag, which was cool because it lets kids know like one that everyone in life who is different from you, and there may be a lot of people who are different than you, you can still love and respect and accept them. And it's not so crazy if you feel, and a lot of people a lot of times feel they don't fit in. And drag queens don't hardly ever fit in, mm -hmm. unless you're at like a drag brunch. So, but it's okay to stand out. And that's what it says to these kids. It's okay to be different and embrace those differences and love who you are and own it and share it. Because when you are confident in yourself, you can go forward and share that with other people yeah. and be fearless. And uh, that's why I'm super excited about this younger generation, yeah. honey. They got all these words that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take that. Shook, yeah, yeah. shook. I'm shook, bitch. I'm shook. <laughs> that's a favorite for sure. Um, I wanna talk about those young fans for a moment because you have tremendous impact on them. For a lot of people, obviously, this show is about drag queens, but as RuPaul has often said, it's a show about a lot more than just drag queens. Mm -hmm. It's a show about resilience, about community, about this shared bond that we have as queer, trans, bisexual, gay, lesbian individuals. Um, if you were to say what you think the show is really about below the surface, mm -hmm. what is it to you? Uh, the show itself is about love. Mm. You know, RuPaul ends every show with something he's been saying for his entire career, which is uh, everybody say love, uh, or if you can't love yourself, how are you gonna love somebody else? And that's what truly is at the core of the show. Now, of course, we have the drama and all that extra that makes reality TV, but you get to know these characters, these people, uh, these queens who have so many different unique experiences, myself included, you know, where I come from, and someone may identify with either my biracial background or the fact that I grew up in a Southern Baptist family home, um, the fact that I'm from a small town, or the fact that I'm just trying to make my way in Hollywood, whatever it is that they gather, the fact that I was, you know, told no twice to sashay away and keep coming back, whatever they, you know, identify with, that's something special, and it really does um, connect us in a big way. And it's because we have a lot of love for each other. You know, on the show, you'll see the sisters, even though we're vying for the same crown, we still try to uplift and support each other in the workroom. You know, if someone talks about their mom who passed or the fact that they had an illness that they've been battling with, you'll see the girls rally around them because here's at the end of the day. Yes, it's a competition. We gotta go into a competition as competitors because we all wanna win. But we, outside of RuPaul's Drag Race, and that's what I've learned in the drag community as well, in those dressing rooms where you're getting painted next to the girls, you have to support each other because outside that dressing room, a lot of people don't support you. Right. So it's important when you're in there to try and be nice to each other. Lend a girl a brush. Don't lend her your eyeliner, you'll get pink eye. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, help, help, help a sister out. Yeah. 
I want to talk for a minute about drag and gender. Mm -hmm. um, Oprah, or excuse me, RuPaul was recently Oprah on 2020. Oprah. Oprah 2020! <laughs> <laughs> RuPaul was recently on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday, and yes. one thing that seemed to perplex Oprah was sort of breaking down whether or not RuPaul was a character that RuPaul Charles played, or how that relationship worked. Mm -hmm. And RuPaul broke it down, and, and he said, I am always RuPaul. Yes. How do you differentiate DJ from Shangela, and how do you compartmentalize the two? Well, everyone's a different type of queen. Some people get in drag and completely change their character and who they are because that's what they've created and it's drag. Everybody's allowed to do whatever you want to in drag. For me, um, I see Shangela as a super heightened sense of DJ. Look, the person you see right here is the person you're gonna meet out on the street, walking Times Square with my hair, curly hair out and in a t-shirt and the jeans. It's the same person. But when I'm in drag, it's, you know, it's extra glamour, it's hair, it's fabulous, it's all this. But, I mean, I'm still a small town kid from Paris, Texas that's loud and country as hell. And, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes has a challenge at sewing. You know, these are just all the things that make me me. And I love who I am. I really do. I love who I am and I love being able to sit down here and like talk to you and connect with you. And I would still be able to pull that connection with you even if I wasn't in drag. It's funny, the last time I interviewed you, yeah. you were not in drag. That's so right. It's interesting having this yeah. conversation. Now it's more glitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what about pronouns? Because as DJ, you are he, him, and as Shangela, I mean, we think of you as she, she as Shangela. How do you break down the pronouns? Well, you know, I get asked this a lot, especially working as an actor in Hollywood yes. because you go on set and they're like, okay, we want to be super, you know, PC and we want to make you feel comfortable, what would you like to be called? And I said, baby, you can call me anything except prostitute, okay? I'm <laughs> happy with it all. Because honestly, when we get, and I, I respect people who, in their daily life, it really does affect them. So whatever they want to be called, I think we should respect that and, and go forward with that. But for me, I'm a drag queen. This all is an illusion anyway. To me, the pronouns are also an illusion. He, him, her, she, they, you know, don't call me it. But, you know, it all is just an illusion. So it doesn't bother me at all, he, him, her. In drag, I like to be referred to as she, because I feel, you know, glamorous and fabulous and, and that. But that doesn't work for everybody. So I say whatever people feel most comfortable with, identifying with, we should respect that. But for me, honey, hallelujah, just call me Miss Thing. <laughs> Miss Thing, come over here, Miss Thing. Come here, Miss Thing. I want to get your thoughts on this quote from the New York Times article. Okay. It says, the show, which first aired on Logo, has, has which now on VH1, attracted a larger, more female audience, many of whom embrace drag as an arena for gender expression. Mm -hmm. um, can you sort of illuminate how uh, drag has affected your idea of gender expression? Well, um, I definitely feel like drag, because to me, it's fun to play between the genders because you learn so much about, um, for me, I learn so much about the female experience. Now, I don't know everything, okay? I don't know everything. I'm not trying to claim it to know everything. Don't get the girls coming, but you don't know about being a woman. But you do experience certain things as a female, you know, how different people look at you or how um, they are, you know, listen to you, whether it's in a business setting, you know, I always watch this documentaries that Beyonce does, and she's like, as a woman, I have to fight harder to sometimes even contain myself in a situation because you go off and people think you're a bitch. But if a man did it, you're, you know, just being vocal about your opinion and, and, and getting the job done. And I've experienced that in drag. You know, I can go in there as DJ and be like, I want this change and this, and then people are like, okay. And I go in there as Shangela, like, ooh, she's a bitch. And it's not that, it's just that I want to deliver my show the way I deliver my show. And I, and I always say, I'm not a bitch, I just paint that way. But, uh, <laughs> but truly, it, you know, you learn about how different genders express themselves and the different experiences they have. And I think that being a drag queen makes me a more well-rounded person. You know, I remember Lady Gaga said when she was on the show that drag queens and the gays in her life made her a better woman and helped her to become a real, you know, a full woman. And um, I think that the women in my life have made me become a better queen, really, because I was raised by my mom, my grandma, my aunt, and um, that's how I, I really express and, and, and find myself. How does your mom and your family in general, how do they react to Shangela? Is, is she just an extension of DJ Ooh, for them? They lock the door on me, honey. They don't want to see me coming <laughs> home for the holiday. <laughs> I'm kidding. My mom is like my super biggest fan, to the point where I had to tell her, mama, pull back. Like, she drives Uber, 
now in her free time. And she will, this is a true story. She picked me up from the airport. I said, mom, why are eight by tens of me like randomly laying, like literally taped to the back of her seat? She, they people get in her car and she starts playing working girl oh, to God. see if they're gonna be like, who is that? Or is that yes. Shangela? And she goes, that's my son. And I'm like, mother, you cannot do that. Or she'll call me random and be like, hey, say hi to my, my riders. And I'm like, <laughs> mom, are you kidding me? She'll do anything but five stars, mama. And my grandma, it was, um, she is very supportive, but it was a different experience because <laughs> I forgot to tell him I was a drag queen. So RuPaul's Drag Race came on and people in Paris were talking about the fact that DJ was on TV as a woman. So she was like, as a woman, what do you mean? And she didn't really understand what drag was. So mm. it opened the opportunity for me to have a conversation. She thought maybe I was transitioning. She, she was like, are you going to the grocery store with the wig on? I don't understand. So it opened the opportunity for me to say, okay, Graham, this is what drag is. I would tell her, you know how you love, for me, you know how you love Miss Doubtfire? And all, she said, oh, I love Doubtfire. I said, you know, you love her, you love Big Mama's house and Eddie Murphy. Oh, I love it. I said, it's the same for me. I'm getting in drag and it's a character that I do and, you know, and uh, that's what it is. And she like was like, oh, I get it. And now, get this, this is how, this is how my grandma's classic black household is, okay? There is a picture of, on the wall, Jesus, Martin Luther King, Obama, and Shangela. As it truly, be. yes. <laughs> and she gets a kick out of it. She'll be like, my physical therapy man came yesterday and he didn't even know you was a boy. Oh I told him, I said, that's my grandson. He was like, is this your daughter? I said, no, that's my grandson. Oh, you should have seen his face. <laughs> she has me laughing. She's lo she wants nail polish from me all the time. I'm like, Grandma, I wear nail gloves. I don't want no nail polish. <laughs> now, you said you like sat your grandma down and you explained this to her. Yes. One thing I noticed as I interview most of these queens is the comment sections on the post people seem to have, that don't understand this, seem to have a really hard time understanding or conflating the idea of drag queens and women, mm -hmm. trans women, et cetera, just the idea of gender and drag. Um, for people that aren't so easily made to understand, how do you break it down for them to explain really what a drag queen is and how a drag queen, queen can be a woman mm -hmm. and that you are not a woman, like sort of the idea, that all the complexities of that? Well, you know, I think that, especially with RuPaul's Drag Race being in so many homes uh, in the U.S. and around the world, that has opened that conversation a right. lot. And we get that question. And I always say, you know, if you have a question about someone, ask them. Don't be afraid and do it respectfully, of course. And most times they're going to give you the answer that best explains it to you. Because I don't know everyone's experience. I can't, you know, tell you that. For me, I like I told my grandma, I just break it down as it's it's a heightened sense of myself with a lot of extra glamour and sparkle. It's getting in drag. I give I like to give female illusion. I like to get on stage and perform as Beyonce or or do my songs. But you know, it's like when Beyonce goes into Sasha Fierce. It's this extra-ness about yourself that you add on, you put on the makeup, you put on the wig. And that's my experience in it. But like I said, everyone has a different experience. You know, uh, I learned so much about the trans community because I had so many friends that are trans. And working in drag, we work with so many uh, transsexual and transgender, fabulous, talented, amazing queens, but I don't live their experience. So I don't know everything about it. And I'm sure I've said stupid stuff. Sometimes they look at me like, girl. But they've been so nice to me in explaining. And I get, in, you know, um, I just enjoy hearing their stories and knowing them better. And know they're my sisters. And we don't always have the same experience yeah. in that same community but we can learn about each other. And there seems to be a lot of people that want to define what a woman is or what a drag queen is. Yes. And my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that anyone who wants to be a drag queen can be a drag queen. True. Do you feel similarly? Yeah, I do. I mean, I've traveled around the world now. I've seen drag in so many different places and it's so many different unique styles of drag. Originally, I'm from uh, Texas. Pageant drag is what's huge there, or it was when I was coming up. So that's all I really knew. So when I moved to LA and I started seeing different types of drag, I'm like, she ain't doing drag. She don't have no earrings on. What do you mean? <laughs> She's not even padded. That's not drag. But I had to learn that actually is drag. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different types of amazing drag, and you can learn so much from different types of people that do different types of drag. And there are like straight women that get up in drag. There's bio pageants for biological women's that have like, that get in drag and do drag. This lady I know named Jackie Huba from um, Texas did a TED talk on it. Um, and it's just amazing to see people be able to express themselves in drag. And so yes, I think that anybody can get in drag, just try to do it well. 
There was a bearded runway challenge in Drag yes. Race season seven that caught a lot of people's attention, and there seemed to be a lot of discourse on online, as there always is. Well, don't get milk started, honey. You know, she Hold thinks on. she started the bearded queen thing. So, <laughs> and there was a lot of pushback to the idea that can a drag queen have a beard? Yes. Which seems like obviously a drag queen. Yes, it seems so obvious, right? But why do you think people have such um, built-in parameters around what a drag queen is? Do you mm -hmm. think that's because uh, throughout early time we just saw one sort of there was a maybe it's like a, there was this idea of lady bunny or what have you mm -hmm. as creating this ideal of that it's female illusion is there room for more than that of course there is yeah there is and there has been over time what I always tell people is a lot of stuff that we think is brand new it's really not new we just haven't done enough research to mm -hmm. know the person that was doing it in some small place in some small corner of the world um, bearded queens Yes, of course there's a place for them, but people didn't really understand. I get that too. Like We have girls on the show, uh, like for example, Milk this week told me she was getting some you know, feedback that people were like, why isn't she in drag? But she was in drag. She was in her style of drag. And her style of drag is very artistic and creative in a way that is a different type of artistic and creative than some, of, some other girls. I like female illusion. I got this wig on, I got have these earrings, this mug. You know, I that's what I love in drag. But drag is about being able to express yourself, who you are. This might not be everyone's type of drag. I hope it's the judges on All Stars. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, everyone's welcome. And I, I always say like I think that people should give every type of drag a chance because you never know what you'll learn when you open up to other people. Yeah, you mentioned Milk and I, and I want to read his tweet recently and get okay. your response to it. He said, for all of those who have messaged me saying they are tired of my boy looks, do you just as easily uh, do you do you just as easily tire of fishy traditional makeup? I doubt it because you still live in a strictly masculine feminine spectrum. Embrace the gray area. What do you see as being that gray area? How do you define it? Well, um I applaud Milk because she does go for her look, you know, and knowing that it may not be received well by everyone. I'm jealous of her because a lot of times she look a lot more comfortable than I do because uh, she ain't padded. She, ain't got <laughs> <laughs> she has on a flat shoe instead of a pump. I'm like, bitch. But that being said, I think she's exactly right. We should embrace the gray area because, I mean, like we've sat here and talked about, it is about how an individual mm -hmm. expresses themselves. And, the, and it's just like walking in life. You see me walking down the street, I got this big, fuzzy, you know, fabulous pink coat on. This might not be everyone's midday look. They may not embrace it, they may not like it, but I would like in, a, in an ideal world if they would just live and let me live. Mm -hmm. Just let me be fabulous in the way that I want to be fabulous. Was there a learning curve for you at all in terms of accepting the idea? Because you, like you said, you grew up with pageant drag, which yes. is a very specific aesthetic of drag. And there's nothing wrong with pageant drag. I think that pageant drag gets a bad rap on RuPaul's Drag Race. They're like, oh, she's pageant. Why? Because she's put together, that's what, the pageants before RuPaul's Drag Race, the pageant world was kind of the epitome for a lot of people of the height of where you could make it. You couldn't get booked in another city other than your own unless you were a title holder in a pageant, which is why so many girls put so much money and time and effort into pageantry. RuPaul's Drag Race is kind of like a pageant. There's just not one particular category, there's like 90, but even still, it's about putting yourself together and presenting yourself as the best. So, you know, yes, I did grow up with pageant dragon. Yes, there was a, a, a learning curve in which I was, became more open to other types of drag, but I don't think there was ever anything wrong with pageant drag, and I love it, and I wouldn't have wanted to get my star or, and, or you know, my love for drag anywhere else because those girls performed. Yeah. They got out there, whether they were dancing and bucking and twirling, or they were putting together a creative monologue or a comedy skit, you know, that was the epitome of drag. Yeah. And that's where I learned it so well, and that's why I respect and love, and I always give like mad love to girls who did pageants, yeah. and who are still in the pageant world, because it's sickening. There's other types of drag, which yes. we love, but I live for pageants. You mentioned earlier this idea of really, as a woman, seeing some of the ways in which women are not treated equally to men and having that unique perspective of experiencing the world, both as a man and a woman. I'm curious, has have the experiences of being in this world as Shangela, the woman, informed at all how DJ, the man, experiences life? Or has it changed the way DJ looks at the world at all? Oh, for sure. 
I think that being able to experience the world uh, playing between the genders a lot of times makes me a more well-rounded person because um, you get to just live in someone else's shoes or pumps, no matter how fabulous they are. Um, it just gives me so much more of a well-rounded experience. And that's what I really want to go through life doing is learning and growing and evolving and being able to see stuff from your perspective and her perspective and her perspective because, um, you know, you get to identify with people more and you're more understanding. So I get it if some, you know, these girls who walk the streets barefoot on New Year's Eve at 2 o'clock in the morning, they're like, ew, how could she do that? I'm like, honey, her feet hurt. I know. I've been in that pump for three hours. Or you wear that shoe that by the end of the day, you're like, never this shoe again, honey. Never that shoe again. <laughs> mm, I love that. Um, so I want to end by talking about a project that you have coming up. Oh, I got that, lots of projects. Well, Let's you have talk. one yes. in particular that I'm extremely excited about. Yes. And I know the world as well is extremely excited about. You are going to be starring opposite Lady Gaga oh. in A Star is Born. Now, you're, you're giving me so much so much in that. I'm not starring. I'm okay, giving I'm you that. I'm not starring <laughs> opposite Lady Gaga. I am uh, acting in the same movie with Gaga. I do have scenes with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, who, ooh, Mr. Cooper, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, I'm going to be on the big screen. And you never know. I don't really tell a lot of people until you actually see it on the screen because things could always end up on the editing room floor. But I've had some really good people who have seen cut to the film and they're like, don't worry, Shanji, you're gonna be really happy, you're gonna live. So I can tell everybody, I'm in the movie with Lady Gaga! I am so excited because she was everything you would want her to be on set and like talk, and I'd met her before because we did her, me and Courtney did her applause lyric music video oh at God. Mickey's in West Hollywood. Yes. yes. And I remember now, this is a fun oh. story. Do I have like 30 yes. seconds to do this? Okay. So I was like, I was booked on Bones and they told me I was going to be performing a Beyonce Never Run the World. So I had the Beyonce gold costume made oh. from the tour. I had the Beyonce hair. I show up to set and as we're going to the set, they tell me, oh no, 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 you're going to be lip syncing. We couldn't get it cleared. We got uh, Just Dance by Lady Gaga. So there I am on Bones, season four, episode three, in the Beyonce tour costume with the Beyonce hair, looking like Beyonce, performing Just Dance by Lady Gaga. Incredible. <laughs> she goes, ah, uh, Shan. You know how like, Shan, <laughs> Shan, ah, uh, Richie. That's her laugh. She don't really laugh. She's like, ah, uh, Shan. And then it was so funny. That's incredible. I lived, I lived. And I asked, also asked her because we're in this like little dressing room with the, you know, between takes and they're moving cameras around. And I was like, I'm with Lady Gaga. I gotta take advantage of this moment. So I said, I just wanna ask you because I, I travel so much, but it's nothing compared to what you do. And I've had some great moments in my life, but you have so many big moments. You just came off the Super Bowl. You're filming this movie, your album, album, album tour. How do you remember all this? I'm like, do you keep a journal or like, do you write it down? And she said, Shan, I'll tell you. And she was very serious. She said, look around this room. These friends of mine, Bobby, her manager, Richie, you know, um, she's pointing at people. And she's like, these are the people that hold my memories. Because when I look at them, I automatically am taken back to mm -hmm. Richie and I trying to get into the clubs in New York to perform my song or giving it to DJs, going around, handing it out everywhere. She goes, that I look in their eyes and I remember. And that says something about a person who's kept a team around her for right. so long too. She's like, my whole career, these people have been here. And that was so special to me because I have great people that I work with, my best friend Junior and Liam, my assistant. Oh, I'm Lady Gaga's home girl. Favorite Gaga song? <laughs> oh, play, favorite Gaga song? Um, it's good. Well, I just came from the Joanne concert mm -hmm. and I live for the Joanne mm -hmm. concert. John Wayne gets me going. Uh, yes, and a video. Um, oh God, yes. come on, Mama Sita. <laughs> but you know, when you put on Perfect Illusion, yeah. I'm going to work up a sweat. But classic Gaga is also everything. You can't mess around with paparazzi, bad romance, yes. you know, just dance, hits, the classic. Hits, 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 yes. hits, hits yes. on hits. And million reasons. When I yeah. sit down at a piano, I can't play the piano, but I try. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, him and me, I'm here, me, the show. I go in, I go in. So my last <laughs> question is, obviously we have a lot of young people what? watching. What, last? We were I having know, a good time. No, I kidding. know, believe me, I wish you'd say all day. <laughs> but last question is, I want you to sort of give a message to young people out there who might be curious about drag or have might, mm. might have tried on their mom's dress and been scolded by their parent. What message do you say to young people, whether they be experimenting with their gender or experimenting with just putting on a dress, which can be one and the same and can be different yeah. as we've explored, but what message do you want to send to them? I would like to, can I give it to them right yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, listen, and I, I really want you guys to hear me on this. 
Because I was also the person that when my mom would go to work, sometimes summer vacation, I would put, we wore the same size. So I would put on her heels and disco around and work up a sweat. A lot of times I felt like, okay, this is weird. I'm weird, but oh well, that's me. You're not weird. You're actually very special and you're amazing and you are to be accepted and loved for exactly who you are. And that's, and that's great to embrace yourself because when you embrace yourself and you give that love, don't look for that love from everyone else. That's bonus. When other people love you, that's bonus. You love yourself and you look in the mirror and be proud of who you are and twirl twirl, have a great time and enjoy life. And as you continue to grow, you'll get better, you'll come into yourself, you'll know who you are, but you have to accept and love yourself because it's special. And I love you, hallelujah. I mean, could we end on a better note? Uh, I think not. And I love you, I love how about you. that? Um, thank you so much for joining us. You can catch Shangela on Drag Race All Stars 3 premiering next Thursday at 8 p.m. on VH1. Yes. And can... come see me, come yeah. see me. I'm gonna be at Mickey's West Hollywood every Thursday. Work. I have a viewing party. Fans can experience the show right alongside me and they can keep in touch with me online, social media, and my website, which is relaunching next week with all new Shangela merchandise, hallelujah. And I just wanna mention, if you're looking for a gym beat, working girl, YouTube, Spotify, etc. Yes. It's just, if you want to get going at the gym, you just got to put it on. Because you came you. to work. Always. Hallelujah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank what a you, pleasure. Baby. Bye, guys. Bye. Clock the hair. Clock the hair. Clock the mug. Clock the mug. Clock the nails. Clock my skirt. You better get into it. Clock the bag. Clock the bag. Clock the shoe. Clock the shoe. Now punch the clock. It's time to work. work.